Good morning. Today we are going to talk to Dr. Arun Gokul from the Department of Plant Science. Welcome, Dr. Thank you so much. Uh, Dr. Can you share with us how did you become a researcher? Um, I started my undergrad uh, degree at the University of Cape Peninsula University of Technology, um, and thereafter I did my postgraduate degrees at the University of the Western Cape. Um, following my PhD uh, degree that I completed in 2016, um, I then got the opportunity through the NRF and the Center of Excellence for Food Security to do a dual uh, postdoctoral fellowship in both the Western Cape and I spent a year at the University of Missouri uh, at the Interdisciplinary Plant Group under the uh, guidance of David Mendoza Mazeta. Uh, thereafter, I did a another postdoctoral fellowship at the University of Johannesburg and I think um, my academic career and research career took off from, from the um, I then got the opportunity to come to the University of the Free State and I think that is my, my story for now. Thank you so much doctor. And then what are you currently working on? So the current theme of my research is looking at uh, sustainable agriculture through augmenting agricultural processes. So what that means is I'm looking at ways to both promote plant growth but also improve uh, crop plants tolerance to uh, phytopathogens or pathogens that uh, decrease their yield. So those are the two fo uh, focuses of my lab currently. Thank you so much Doctor. And then what role can artificial intelligence to play in the field of plant science? So artificial intelligence is required now more than ever uh, within all disciplines of research but especially in the agricultural sphere. The reason being is we have a lack of predictive models that can allow us to basically narrow down what the research focus should be. So by using the uh, artificial intelligence and the whole for industrial revolution, um, we are able to target specific things for change or, or augmentation in order to get these uh, higher yields of plants, better producing plants, higher nutritional quality in plants. So I think it does play a big role. Um, we currently have collaborators and in America which are using these techniques and um, in terms of the artificial intelligence and for the industrial revolution in order to track and identify how metals are being taken up into plants so we know exactly how, how they are taken up and where do they go. Um, so all these models and technologies are definitely required. Thank you so much Doctor. And then looking at global warming and the changes in the atmosphere, what impact does it have on plant physiology? So it's very tightly linked to that. Um, global warming means the warming of the climate, but in certain areas we have actually a reduction in the normal climate. So it's getting cold in some places and warmer in others. So that definitely has an effect on what is normally grown there. Also, as you said, um, gases, carbon dioxide and carbon emissions are also having an effect on plants because plants are carbon sinks. So by the temperature changing and the gases within the atmosphere changing, it definitely has an effect on plant physiology and therefore the biochemistry. So in order for us to be able to feed the nation, feed the world, we need to understand how plants grow and how they and this links with how they grow under these changing uh, factors such as temperature and gases within the atmosphere. So it's very closely linked because if we make a certain technique or a certain agricultural practice to improve the growth, however you have an increase in temperature, now you have an added factor that was not there before. Um, so I do think uh, we need to take that into consideration always when um, doing our studies and 
the stress testing them for before they are implemented in the agricultural industry. Thank you so much, Doctor. Are there any exciting gaps within your field of study? There are many, and I hope that I am trying to address a few of those gaps. Okay. Um, so, like I said, I'm looking at sustainable agriculture, and as we know, the main way to control pathogens, uh, plant pathogens, is the use of chemical fungicides and pesticides. However, um, it has been reported in many literature and big companies have also been implicated where these, uh, the use of these chemical pesticides have led to both human health issues, animal health issues, uh, detrimental, detrimental effects on the crops themselves, detrimental effects on the water quality, soil quality. So we need to move away from chemical pesticides. So one of the alternatives that my lab is currently working on is using microorganisms that reside in plants to act as biocontrol agents. Agents which control, which they actually do control uh, these phytopathogens, but we introduce them into crop plants. So to try and confer that tolerance to the crop plant we might not have been before. In this way, we don't have to do any genetic modification because we know that is a contentious issue. Yes. But we can improve the tolerance by just adding this microorganism and we are seeing uh, very good results currently in my lab and um, we're currently working on the publication to show its um, efficacy. And then, can you enlighten us how plant science relate to biochemistry? So, plant sciences in itself has a whole host of different uh, subcategories, if I can put it that way. And um, as we know, all organisms, all living organisms have some type of biochemistry, whether they be simple or more complex. So, when we're looking at these plants, we need to understand what is happening at the biochemical level that is changing, that you because you see the, the physiology, yes. the, the phenotypic characteristics, what you can see from the outside. But it's normally dictated from what is happening on the inside. So if we are able to change something on the inside and have a positive effect on the outside, that is primarily what we want to do. Wow, that's great. And then, Doctor, what message can you share with aspiring researchers? It starts now. It starts at undergrad. It starts when you do your honours. It starts when you do your internships. You don't just become a researcher. It's something that is built on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, coming into contact with other researchers, disseminating your information, doing the research. It's not just being in the lab. You must be able to send your message out there, whether it be in a written way, in a written manner, through research, a research article, a review article, an opinion piece, but also communicate orally through um, hosting workshops or presenting at conferences, um, speaking to your, 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 your fellow researchers. So again, that is what I've learned that, and one thing that I must say, a researcher is always being both. Even myself, I sometimes consider myself a researcher, but under progress. Because it, it, it's a bolt, um, it's always been bolted. Yes. Thank you so much. And then, Doctor, apart from research, what are your other interests? So, apart from research, uh, I mean, if you really love your work, your, your interests lie in your work. <laughs> so, um, I do have, um, I do have, I'm an amateur gardener, so I do think that plays a role in my actual job. Um, but then also, my interest lies in music, um, movies, I think most people love movies. Mm -hmm. So, and yeah, those, those are my interests, reading, um, literature, it builds you and helps you also in your work, I guess, yes. being able to write. So, I think all of those things that actually melted into each other, the work and the interests. Mm -hmm.
Yes, and thank you so much for your time, Doctor, and we really appreciate that you have shared with us. Thank you. Thank you so much for the time. Thanks.